if you can't make your rent payment next month, where are you going? Nowhere. Where are you guys over there? Where are you going? Nowhere. Nowhere. Are you going to the Gateway Center? No. <laughs> no. What what people need to understand is that the the service that this shelter provides is not provided anywhere else. Uh, the the Gateway Center, which is supposed to be you know the model, this was embraced by Shirley Franklin as a business community. Uh, they have limits to how many people they will serve. They have criteria that limit who they will serve. Have you seen it? It's it, it's behind barbed wire. Yeah. I wouldn't want to go in there. And um, so therefore, uh, there are many people who have nowhere else to go. There are other shelters that may be full. This is the shelter that will take everyone who has nowhere else to go and won't set criteria. You have to meet this criteria in order to come in here. And so that's very important. There are thousands of people who rely on this shelter. Homelessness is, you know, it's, it's not just chronic, it's episodic. So people can come here, you know, and then get back on their feet. When we lose this resource, we are really losing, um, you know, not just the people who are here now, the hundreds of people, but literally thousands of people who rely on this. Um, as people have said, we have, a, we, we, we have insufficient affordable housing, and, you know, Anita has made it a point over the years. I, mean, I don't think people realize that Anita was, like, the original, the original um, champion for the homeless, and 20, 30 years, and she has... I mean, the, 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 the money, the, the grant money actually used to come through the task force and be dispersed out before the city tried to take that over. But the fact is that Anita insists that the, 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 that the cause of homelessness is not a personal defect. It is not, oh, you, you know, they, they just can't get themselves together. They just, uh, they, you know, they have personal behavioral issues, drug problems, whatever. You know, there's a lot of people who do have housing who have behavioral issues and drug problems. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Anita's, uh, Anita's point is that this is a, a structural issue dealing with the lack of affordable housing. The task force embraces advocacy as well as service. And that, I, I think people need to know, that is the reason that they have been attacked. Yeah. Not only because uh, the business community is not so excited about having poor black people on this street, but also because the task force has spoken up over the panhandling ban, the crackdown on the homeless during the Olympics, the demolition of public housing, um, on an, the privatization of gravy, uh, gravy. <laughs> that they, that's what they look at it like it was gravy. The privatization of gravy, you know, the, the crackdown on Woodruff Park, all these things, and that's why they're being attacked today. And the war on the poor. And the, and the war on the poor, all those things. So that's why, that's why they want to get, get, that's why they wanted to get rid of the task force. Um, the coverage, I encourage people to go to atlantaprogressivenews.com. We have, yeah. we have yes. covered yeah. um, the, the depths of what's going on with this conspiracy. And, I mean, people need to know private donors were approached, public agencies were approached, the people who originally owned the loans on this building were approached. It was, a, it was a conspiracy, a documented conspiracy involving city officials and Central Atlanta Progress. Debbie Starnes. And Debbie Starnes. Oh, Debbie great. Starnes was getting paid from a downtown hotel in Central Atlanta Progress and then turning around and trying to get rid of the task force. Uh, being the homelessness czar, directing money away from the task force working for the United Way, which was funneling that money, yeah. which was benefiting from the funds, since they weren't going to the task force, where else were they going? Yeah. This was like a quadruple conflict of interest, and she was a consultant, a private consultant on the side, advising homeless service agencies how to, um, how, how to, how to get money and do program value, quadruple conflict of interest. Yeah. So I encourage people to, to look at this. this. I don't use the word conspiracy lightly because you kind of have to have emails and stuff like saying, here's the plan, guys. Those exist. 
So, you know, I encourage people to look at the evidence. This is, this is very serious, this has been a concerted effort, but I want people to also, as I said in the beginning, think about where else are you going if you're going to be homeless tomorrow. This isn't just about the people who are here, this is about all of us. And this is about saying that housing is a human right, we have to have housing, and therefore this place is absolutely so fundamental. They want you know, the, the right to housing to be dependent on whether you have the money to afford it. And we're saying, no. This place, I, I have a different vision, and that's their vision, and people need to see the coffee shop. People need to visualize the uh, retail shop. They want to empower people. They have a master plan, okay? But that the money for the master plan was taken away. Yeah. This building right here could actually be really um, not only a, a service provider but a, a, a retail shop they want to have more sustainable housing units independent housing units the, the plans for this building that they have dreamt up are are very compelling and uh, and so we just hope also that the city will restore the funding for the task force so that they can uh, pursue those those wonderful plans thank you